Hello, I'm Linda Katz-Wilner, founder and director of Successfully Speaking. Today I'd like to talk to you about some tips for successful interviewing. Remember, we do not get a second chance to make a first impression. I like to look at communication with three V's. The visual, how you look, the vocal, how you sound, and the verbal, what you say. The three V's need to be in alignment and consistent to form a consistent professional image. Let's talk about the visual aspects of communication. First, we have the smile. Of course, it's appropriate to smile in an interview, but be careful and make sure you're smiling appropriately. If the content of the conversation becomes a sad situation or a negative situation, the smile may be inconsistent with the message, and that confuses the listener. Your handshake. Studies have shown that the handshake is one of the most important aspects of forming that first impression. Remember, a handshake should be the same whether you're shaking hands with a man or a woman. Make sure to have a firm handshake and grab the entire hand rather than just holding somebody's fingertips. There's no reason to overpower anybody with a handshake. It just should be firm and friendly. Eye contact. Of course, you need to maintain eye contact, but there are some tips to remember when doing so. Eye contact should be held for three to six seconds. It shows that you're honest and friendly and you have nothing to hide. However, some people have some problems with eye contact. If you have difficulty making eye contact, look at the person's bridge of their nose. The listener doesn't realize that you may not be looking right at the eyes. Other things to think about is to avoid staring and looking intently at the person and never looking away. If more than one person is interviewing you, be careful not to dart your eyes back and forth quickly because then you never engage with anyone. Remember to talk to one person for three to four seconds and then shift your gaze to the other person and look to them for three to four seconds. So just make sure you are maintaining eye contact for long enough to engage with that person. Other things people do with eye contact might be closing their eyes as they're thinking, looking to the ceiling, looking to the floor. And if you find you must look away for a moment, do so, but when you resume speaking, make sure you're making eye contact. Posture. Make sure you're sitting straight in the chair, not slouched or slumped over, slightly leaning forward, and own your space. If somebody becomes very diminutive, closes their arms, crosses their legs, and makes themselves small, they're not going to look as confident as the person who takes up more space in the room or in the chair. Avoid fidgeting in the chair, rocking back and forth. If it's a swivel chair, try not to swing back and forth. All of these are going to project a more nervous image. Gestures need to be consistent with our message. We want to make sure that we're not flailing our arms around or distracting the listener as we're speaking. We want to be careful not to cross our arms because we look very closed off, not to sit on our hands because then we can't gesture at all, naturally. Clasping our hands or wringing our hands are going to make us look very nervous. And finally, be careful not to put your hands in front of your mouth when you're speaking because then you look like you're very unsure of the content that you're saying. So make sure to use your hands naturally and gesture appropriately. Voice. Let's talk a little bit about your voice. You want to make sure that you're projecting your voice. Somebody speaking very quietly. Or somebody speaking very loud is going to send out a different type of message. So you should have adequate volume for the size room and the number of people you're speaking with. You want to speak at a comfortable rate, not too fast where they can't even understand you, and certainly not too slow where you bore them. You want to avoid uptalk. Uptalk is raising your pitch at the end of statements. If I said to you, my name is Linda Wilner, 
I sound like I'm not even sure. I should be saying, my name is Linda Wilner. Another example of this would be, I worked there for three years. The question might be, are you sure? So make sure you're saying it in a way such as, I worked there for three years. Another aspect of the vocal communication is when we add word fillers like um, like, you know, so, words that we just add because we're thinking and trying to connect our thoughts with some words, but they're meaningless and they actually undermine our message. What to do about these word fillers? When you feel that you don't know what you're going to say next, pause to gather your thoughts. It's better to pause and create space where the listeners can gather your information and then move on to the next thought with you than if you fill it with ums, likes, you knows. You'll also come across less organized and less confident. Let's talk about the verbal aspects of communication, what you say. One very good strategy is to remember the interviewer's name and use it throughout the interview. Another thing is to think about the interview not as an interrogation, but as a conversation. They may ask you questions, you may answer with answers, but also you can ask them questions. The conversation should go back and forth, and that would appear much more natural. Certainly no information about the company or the interviewer, so you have appropriate questions that you can ask. There are two ways you can organize your information. Two different acronyms I'd like to discuss. One of them is TIES, T-I-E-S. T for stating the topic, I for introducing it, E for giving some examples, and S for summarizing. By using this strategy, you bookend your talk by introducing it and summarizing it, and you come across much more organized. Another strategy that's often used in interviews is the acronym PAR, P-A-R, or S-A-R. And these stand for, the P or the S, is the problem or situation. So you state the problem or situation. The A is the action. What type of action did you take? What did you do with that problem or situation? And the R is the resolution. How did you resolve it? So this is a very good strategy on how to, again, frame your answers so that you come across in an organized fashion. Some of the things we want to avoid when we're having an interview, and some of these are quite obvious, would be avoid slang, avoid profanity, and avoid casual speech, such as saying, I was working there, for three years, as opposed to, I was working there for three years. We also need to make sure we're using proper English. We should be saying yes, not yeah. We should be saying hello, not hey. Another area which is very obvious is just to remember manners, such as please and thank you. We also want to use correct grammar. Many people make the mistake of using me when they should be using I. It is not me and my team, it is my team and I. And another thing to think about is to avoid religious comments. You really don't know the feelings or thoughts of the person you might be interviewing. So we don't want to offend anybody and just avoid statements like God bless or have a blessed day. So these are some of the tips that can help you with the verbal aspects of communication. When we're talking about communication, we cannot forget the listening skills. You want to be an active listener. Now, how do you do this? One is smile and nod when somebody's talking to you. Lean forward so that you're actively involved in the conversation. Maintain eye contact. You also can restate or paraphrase what they're talking about to show them that you're understanding what they're saying. And by all means, avoid interrupting when somebody else is talking. So remember your listening skills as well as your speaking skills.
We've talked about the three V's of communication, the visual, the vocal, the verbal, and active listening skills. Remember all of these aspects when you're in the interview process. By having all of these aspects in proper alignment, you're going to project a consistent, powerful, and professional image. Good luck on your interviews. For more information, feel free to contact me at Successfully Speaking. I look forward to speaking with you.